Hey there, my name's Drew Brashler, and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the Waves SoundGrid network. Now, I've been releasing a lot of videos on the Waves Super Rack Performer, and the latency on that, the fastest you can get is about 5.9 milliseconds. But with utilizing Waves SoundGrid, we can get that latency of running Waves plugins down to 0.8 milliseconds. That is very fast. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, Waves Sound Grid requires a little bit more setup than Waves Super Act Performer. Waves Super Act Performer is a native audio processing piece of software, which means that it uses the CPU of your computer for doing the audio processing. The benefit of that is there's no additional cost other than the plugins, your computer, and a USB cable to plug into either the XLive, the XUF, or the XUSB card on your Behringer X32. But the benefit of SoundGrid is that you can offload all of the processing to a SoundGrid server, for instance, like this. This is the Waves Mobile SoundGrid server, and it is very small, as you can see. Now, the benefit of this is it can offload all of the Waves processing onto this, and it won't task your computer at all. But you do need to have an expansion card like this, which is the Clark Technic DM32WSG. Now this is identical to the Waze XWSG card that I've done some videos on. However, this is made by Clark Technic and is a current product. The XWSG card is not a current product, but if you can find them out there, all of these videos that I'm going to be releasing are the same thing. So this is our SoundGrid interface. So we can see that there is a network port right here. And to set this up, we need to have a Waves SoundGrid certified network switch, which in this case is gonna be this Netgear GS108. So this is a little eight port pocket switch, and this is Waves certified. So what we do is we take a network cable and we plug in between our SoundGrid port here we then plug it into this Netgear switch. We then take another Ethernet cable. We plug that into the network switch and then into our SoundGrid server where we have this port. And then we take one more Ethernet cable, plug it into the switch and into our computer. Now, in my case, I have a MacBook Pro, a little bit older one, but it does have the Thunderbolt ports. And so I have an adapter from the USB-C to Ethernet. And so I'm going to utilize this. Now, the computer is required for controlling the plugins. So there's a little bit of controlling that happens on the computer, but no audio is processed on your computer. Now, the other benefit of Wave SoundGrid is you can add multiple servers for redundancy. So not only can you have all of your plugins being processed on this server, but you can have multiple servers. So if one of your servers goes down, the other one will just instantly pick up with minimal audio loss. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove my XLive card and install this. So to do this, we want to turn off our console, remove it from power, and then we'll take out the two screws that are here. We will remove the old card and we will put this card in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Now I've went ahead and installed the expansion card and right here under card, we can see a green light and it says DWSG, which is our Clark Technic WSG card. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to grab an ethernet cable and we are going to plug in from the back of that port into our network switch. So I will go ahead and do that. Okay, and we can see that our network Activity lights are on and starting to blink there. The next thing that we need to do is power up our Waves mobile server. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this to power. And I'm going to connect a network cable and then turn it on. The very next thing is I need to connect my computer to this. So I'm going to connect my ethernet cable into my adapter, connect this into the network switch, and then plug that into my computer. Now at this point, I'm ready to get Waves SoundGrid actually going on my computer. So we're going to move over to my computer now and we will get this activated. 
Now, one thing to mention about the networking side is that we want to have this as an isolated network. That's my suggestion that we keep this as an isolated network just to wave SoundGrid. This isn't going to ensure the best reliability. Now, if we have multiple wave servers, then we would be connecting that into our network switch. And if we needed to have more, I would suggest buying a larger switch like the 16 port that they offer or a 24 port. But in this case, I only have these three things connected. So we can go over to my computer here, and if we want to, we can go look at networking, and we can see my USB LAN connection, and this is using a self-assigned IP address. As we can see, this is a 169.254, and then it has a 102.138. This is because this is a self-assigned IP address, and the rest of the items on this network switch are also getting a self-assigned IP address. There's no need to use a DHCP server or a router. We can just simply plug them into an unmanaged switch. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and close out, and we can go and open up SuperRack SoundGrid. So now I have Waves SuperRack SoundGrid opened on my computer, and we need to do a few things of configuration before we can get audio actually going on this. Now, as we can see, we don't have our audio light turned on, and we can see that a whole bunch of things say NA here. Initially, what we need to do is we need to drop this down where it says port, and we need to select our network adapter that we're utilizing for our SoundGrid network, in which case I am using this EN7. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Once we do that, it's going to show that our link is up and that our speed is one gigabit per second. And my sample rate of my console is 48,000 hertz. Now I always recommend that you are running your X32 on 48K. Unless there's a very specific reason that you're running 44.1, I always recommend running it at 48K because you're going to ensure the minimum amount of latency on your input to output and give your musicians the best experience. So to change that, we can go to setup and we can change our sample rate in our global tab right here. So in this case, I want to have it on 48,000 hertz, which I have that selected. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go and add our network devices. So on IO devices, we're going to click the plus, go to network devices, and we will see that DN32WSG is free. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And that is the card on the back of the Behringer X32. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add in our server. So we can go and press the plus, and we can see that my SoundGrid server one, which is our mobile server, is right here. And I can simply connect that. Now at this point, we will notice that our server on our IO is green, meaning that this is up and working. We can also see the CPU usage, and if we want to, we can go and click and see some more information about this specific SoundGrid server. We can also do firmware updates by clicking into our firmware if this is lit, in which case for me, all of my firmware is up to date at this point, so I don't need to update any firmware. If there are any firmware issues, it will alert you on this, in which case you would want to update the firmware through this program, and that way you can ensure the best reliability. The next thing that we can do is we can go to settings and we would want to change our configuration to be 32 racks because there is a limitation on the Behringer X32 with the expansion card that you can process up to 32 channels. So in this case, we wouldn't want to have more than 32 racks because there's no point. There's only 32 channels that we can send from the X32 into waves. So we can go ahead and select 32 racks. The very next thing that we can do is we can go into our overview tab. And at this point, I am ready to route some audio from the console to Waves. So the first way that we can do this is we can send all of the channels from the inputs to Waves and then back into the channels. Now, when you're doing this, you'll want to set your preamp gains first. If you happen to want to adjust the preamp gains later, what you can do is you can go into your setup, tab over to preamps, and then you can go find your preamp in here and adjust accordingly. So in this case, I have my microphone plugged into local one. So check, check, check. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my channel and I'm going to adjust my preamp gain until I get it up to a nominal gain level. Check, 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 check. Hey, one, two, one, two, check, check. Perfect. So we can see that I have now set my gain level at about 40. 
The next thing that we're going to do is after we have set the preamp gains for all of the channels, now we can route it into waves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press routing and then we will go over to card. But what we want to do is we want to match our inputs that we have here. So if you have any routing coming in from your AES 50, you'll want to copy that over to your card settings. So in this case, I have all of my channels coming in on local, but say you had a smaller version of the X32, like a compact or a rack, and you only had 16 channels, and then you had a stage box on AES 50, then we can go and select our AES 50 for the remaining of the inputs. Once you have done this, that means that all of my audio from my channels is going into waves. So we can jump over to waves right now and we can actually go and route our input. So right here on rack one, I'm going to title this vocal. And I'm then going to drop down this arrow and go to mono and go and select my expansion one. Once I do this, it's going to automatically route the output. And as I ch talk into this microphone, check, 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 we will see that the meters are going here but we have not completed the routing back into this channel yet. So what we need to do next is we need to go back over to our input block and we need to go and select card one through 32. At this point, I have completed the path for this microphone through waves back into this console. Now, if we go and look at our preamp tab, we only have a trim up and down. Now again, if you need to go adjust the preamp, you'll need to jump over to our setup, into our preamps tab, go find your input that you are wanting to adjust. For instance, this mic is on local one, and we can then go and adjust this gain accordingly. So at this point, I can go and add some of my favorite plugins. So I can go into my plugin list, I can go and add in an F, Emo F2, which is going to be a high pass and low pass. So we can go ahead and add this. Check, check, check. And then we can go and add in a F6, which is another one of my favorite plugins, which is a multi-band EQ, but it's a dynamic EQ. So it allows you to do some really cool things with audio. And I'll definitely be releasing a video on how I utilize this. We could then go add one of my favorite vocal compressors, which is the CLA 76, which is an emulation of the 1176 compressor. If we wanted to, we could continue to add more and more plugins. Now, one thing that I want you to keep note is right here, this is how many samples of delay or latency is being added by these plugins. Now, notice all of these plugins that I've added have zero samples of latency, which means that there is zero additional latency added because these plugins are processing so well. If we wanted to, we can go ahead and add in our SSL EQ or our SSL channel, which is right here. And we can go ahead and add in either the SSL EQ, which is a zero sample latency, or we could go and add in one of our SSL channels. At this case, we have one sample of latency. But the benefit is now I have all of these beautiful plugins that I can utilize on this microphone for my whole entire board of all 32 channels. And if we wanted to, we could even go in and gift our crowd perfect tune by adding in our Waves Live tune, which is also a zero sample latency. And now at this point, I can get some T-Pain going and have my vocal mic tuned uh, with this plugin. Now, I'm going to be releasing a whole bunch more videos on Waves Super Rack Performer, Waves Super Rack Sound Grid, and some of my favorite plugins that I use. So make sure to keep an eye out for all of those videos that are coming. If you do happen to have any questions, make sure to put those in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video of a Waves plugin or a different mixer that you're hoping that I will make, drop that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com for more articles and tips and tricks, as well as my brand new X32 Fundamentals course, where I go through my favorite five fundamentals that I believe that every audio engineer should understand to be able to mix excellent on their Behringer X32. I hope you have a great day.